Okay, we're going to get started. So today's presentation, Revit model is getting heavy. Here's how you can trim the fat. So I'm your speaker today. My name is Drew Jarvis and I'm a technical consultant at SolidCAD. I'm based in Port Moody, BC. My background is in mechanical engineering, but for the last 17 years, I've been assisting companies in the implementation of advanced workflows to help companies improve productivity and keep up with new technology trends. My work takes me all across Canada and primarily I work with the AEC companies uh, that are implementing Revit, Navisworks, BIM 360 and Autodesk Construction Cloud. So as a BIM manager, we understand that you have limited time to sort through problems and find resolutions. It can be both tedious and frustrating to track down the various fixes. With tools like the Project Cleaner and the Project Processor, we will learn how you can remove information from a Revit model and help reduce the file size of models prior to being linked into projects or prior to sending projects to outside consultants. You can also automate and run tasks including scripts, removing backup files, cleaning, purging, swapping types and materials to help automate common problem resolutions and only spend time on manually fixing those oddball issues. So first up, we have the Project Cleaner. This tool is free, so there's no excuse for not using this one, or for ever having trouble with things like unreferenced DWG file imports in your project. Project Cleaner is available to help you find links and imports in your project and easily remove them, along with views, view templates, sheets, and uh, view filters. This tool can be used to clean a file prior to sharing with consultants, and to clean incoming files before they become background linked files, therefore decreasing the total size of linked models and hopefully speeding up your project. Let's take a look in the software. Let's take a look at the Project Cleaner. Now the Project Cleaner is available as a free tool, so this is a tool that you definitely want to take advantage of. Now the Project Cleaner, once it opens up, is going to give us access to seven different tabs. You can see here that we have the views tab, which will show us all of the views inside of the project, including the schedule views. The idea being we can then check the ones we want to remove. And then when we hit remove, it's going to take them out of the project. But more than that, it gets rid of other things that are kind of hidden. So view templates, we can find the ones that we don't need anymore and we can take them out. We can look for filters can be a time consuming process to remove these. You can see I've got a lot of filters in this project that probably shouldn't be here. These are MEP filters and I've got them in my architectural project right now. Do the same with sheets. We can take out any sheets we want to. And then where I think the value of this is quite often is inside the links and the imports. Really those imports where you have a DWG file, it's no longer linked, but it's inside of your project. It's gonna take up file size. It's gonna slow things down. You're gonna be able to identify them here, check them, and remove them. So let's say I just wanna target those for now. I'm gonna take those four and click the tick. I'm gonna get rid of the image here as well. And once I'm happy, I'm gonna hit remove. You can see it's removed the four imports and it's removed the, uh, the image there. So now we can see less available there for removing. So Project Cleaner is a tool you're gonna use regularly just to keep the health of the project going. Uh, it's also a great way of just identifying, oh, look, we have imports here inside of the project. Uh, we don't really need them, but we know that they're now hidden somewhere inside of the project file. Well, it tells you kind of where to look for them. We can also use it if we're taking files to send to other consultants and we want to make those files clean. We want to just give them the model. We can take out all of the views, all of the sheets, everything apart from the model data. Similarly, if you're receiving a file, and you want to use it as a background file. Again, the most efficient way to have a background linked file is gonna be the clean model file. We don't need all the sheets, sorry, all the views and things like that. Uh, so take them out, take that file size down by probably 50% and get yourself a nice, clean, efficient file. Next up, the project processor. This is the tool to keep your project running smooth and efficient. It will help you clean away types that are clustering up your file. For example, line patterns that start with import. 
It can even be set up to run on multiple files, meaning you can keep your whole project office project files lean and healthy by running it as a regular occurrence. Again, let's take a look inside of Revit now. The project processor is a tool that's going to help us with cleaning up of data that is left behind in your file that most people don't get bound to finding. So for example, when you bring in a CAD file and you explode it because you want to turn it into a detail, you end up left with uh, text types, you end up left with fill patterns, line types or line patterns, uh, lots of different sets of information inside of the file that doesn't need to be there. Now, if you were to bring in, you know, multiple DWG files, explode them and make your detail files from them, by the time you can actually get around to going to clean it up, you've got a big long list of things you need to clean. And it also becomes difficult to select the objects uh, and you know turn them um, into the correct setting and then find them to delete afterwards because not even all of them are available on the purge command. So let's take a look at the project processor and see what is available. Now, your project processor is available via your BIM batch suite. So here we have the project processor. Now there's two tabs inside of the project processor. The first one is so that you can run the tool on multiple project files at once. So you could be, it could be that you have something set up that you use on a weekly basis, and this is going to be able to run through all of your files. The next tab is the actual processes that will be run. So this is where you'll set things up. Now what you have on the left hand side are a list of different uh, options of things you can run. And these are in order. So if you have a batch or um, uh, some sort of script file that you want to run here, uh, that, or PowerShell, that type of thing, you can place that into the scripts area. It's then gonna be followed by whatever's on here. It's then gonna be followed on whatever's on here. So it works its way down the list. Now, working our way down the list, if I start here, you can see when you're opening the file, do you want to remove backups? Do you want to perform an audit? Do you want to save immediately? Things like this. Do you want it to go and save somewhere else after it's processed? So, you know, don't mess with the actual file from the project, um, the live file, but let's do a save as of it and then uh, see the differences. Going into rename, you can see here, maybe you're moving from one project phase to another. So you can set something up here that's going to search for views and change their naming to something else. Similar uh, thing here with uh, we can do with templates, with filters and sheets. So again, uh, moving from one phase to another, you might want to take old previous sheets and rename them to uh, the new phase. Swapping is a, is a really useful one. This is where, uh, as I mentioned, with those DWG files being a bit of a mess, but well, what we can do here is we can start to substitute uh, one dimension style for another. What we can do here then, taking a look at different tabs, for example, maybe we've got some prefixes of a DWG file in our text types. So I can search for something that has a star dot DWG inside of it, or obviously be more specific than that. And I can swap it out for the two and a half mil aerial as an example. Similar things can then be set up for all of these other content types. Moving down into the clean, here you can see things that are going to be removed. So if I go, for example, to my line patterns, I'm going to add something in here that looks for star import star. When you bring in a CAD file, you explode it, you get all those little uh, text, sorry, all those CAD line patterns that get brought in. This is a way of finding them and cleaning them out. So. As you work down through the dialog box, you get access to more and more things that you want to set up. Once it's all set, you can save the configuration. That means you'll then be able to load it into the future. And this can be a tool you use on a regular basis in order to keep your files clean and efficient. Our next tool is the Dimension Checker, which gives us the ability to search for things like text being replaced within the dimension string. For example, where someone takes a text value and changes it to a different dimension length, or perhaps they are very uh, cunning with their 
um, searching in the character mapping and somehow they find a little way of replacing it with something blank. Um, so you're going to find that your users find lots of different ways of messing around uh, with content inside of a Revit file. So this is a way of being able to check that information. So why would we use this? Well, let's say, first of all, we want to make sure that the information on the screen matches the actual design. Um, but also we can use it if we are receiving information from other companies. So maybe we want to take an architect's layout and just see, you know, is everything that we're seeing on there truthful or have they been fudging the numbers a little bit, right? Anyway, let's open up Revit and take a look at this one. Let's take a look at the premium tools drop down here and we'll find the dimension checker. As we can see with the interface for the dimension checker, we have the main display window here that's going to show us all of the different dimensions in the project. And then we have some options down the left hand side. Once we've found all our dimensions, then we're going to be able to make use of some of these tools at the top here for uh, zooming into the dimensions in the project or selecting them. I'm going to start by just hitting search with checkboxes in use the actual value and the ones that are replaced with text. So that's basically going to find all of the dimensions. We can see that the dimension checker has populated with a list of all of the dimensions from the project. This column here, replaced with text value, if I scroll down, you can see we do have a few dimensions where the user has replaced the actual value of dimension with a different value. In fact, one of them they've replaced with just a period here. So let's find out what's going on. What we can do is we can select our item in the list and we can hit show and it will zoom us into it or open up the view required. So middle of the screen is around here. So it's actually this dimension string. But let's just make sure, let's just verify that. I'm going to hit select and we can see there it is selected. Now this is one of those modeless dialog boxes, kind of like a palette. So we can actually do stuff in the background while this is open, which is nice. So I can go and select the dimension string here. And let's take a look at what it says. So this is segment two of eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, inside the wall there, eight. So number two here, I guess. If I click on this 18, there we can see somebody has come in and replaced with text. So I'm just going to go back to actual value and click OK. Now this list is a little bit too long right now. So some of our options over on the left can be made use of. Let's take out show the ones with the actual value. That's ones where they haven't had any overrides. So I'm going to hit search again. Now we can see that the resulting list is of course much shorter. It's not showing those that haven't been overridden. So here are the list of the dimensions that have been overridden and their overridden values. So I'm kind of interested in what's going on with these. So let's take a look. This is section three and section four in this same dimension string. And so what we've found here is that this one is overridden. Let's try that again. There we go. And this next one is overridden. And in fact, we can see it's not even part of the dimension. So what someone's done here is they've uh, kind of gone in and put a piece of text on top. That's a text element there. And in fact, there's just a period in the background. So I guess I can probably click on that one. There we go. Now we can go and use the actual value. And reset its position as I dragged it around on the screen there. Now, other options inside here, what we can do is we can uh, decide which of the text fields we're looking at. So maybe we're looking at particular suffixes or prefixes that we'd like to get in our list. Or maybe we're getting too much here. Maybe there's a lot of typical or, you know, C detail or something like that. And so we can uh, exclude, for example, TYP. So if I indicate that and hit search, now I'm not going to get up these kind of false positives. You know, I'm, I'm happy with the free foot tip perhaps to be in there. And so I don't want that to show up in my list. And finally, we have the schedule parameter resolver. Now, this one's designed to help you get the parameters in the schedule to work the way they're intended to. Often you'll get a schedule where some data is unresponsive, uh, the column is blank, uh, you're going to have issues where this stuff isn't showing up correctly. So 
I'm going to have an example here where we're going to take a look at a schedule um, and we're going to fix it up. So this schedule parameter resolver, very useful tool if you're trying to make full use of schedules inside of your project files. I would actually say this one in conjunction with the parameter jammer, as well as even some of the other, um, the other parameter tools, um, you're going to become much, much more productive and efficient with your use of parameters if you use the tools inside of the CTC suites. Anyway, let's go into Revit and we'll take a final look at this last tool and then we'll come back and check out some of our social feeds. So let's take a look at the schedule parameter resolver. As I open up my CTC tools and go into my premium tools for the BIM manager suite, you can see the schedule parameter resolver here. Now the schedule parameter resolver is going to show us a list of the different schedules inside of here. It's also going to get us to link to a shared parameter file. So I'm going to go and select the correct one. And what we would do is we would pick the schedules that we have challenges with. It's then going to show us the different parameters inside of there. And we have the ability to swap out one parameter for another. So let's take a look at why this is a useful tool. Inside of my project here, if I go into the project browser, I've got a door schedule. Now this door schedule is working pretty well. I've got my mark value and then some dimensional values with a header at the top. I've got some material information here, again with a header at the top here. Now a lot of these parameters here are using shared parameters in order to ensure that the scheduling of them works well. Somebody has then created an additional schedule down here for level one where it's broken out and filtered it by the level. But you'll see now that we've got widths and heights with values of zero. We've got nothing in the thickness. We have nothing in the materials either. So how do we fix this? Well, I can probably go and find the panel material, for example. So I'll go into fields. I'm going to go and scroll down here. There's my panel material. So I want to kind of throw that in. Uh, I'm going to go in between my material and my frame material there and click OK. So what's happened? Well, I've got my data. Data is good, but it, my header here is broken and I still, you know, I still have these to take out. Um, so I've got a bit of work here. And so in order to fix this up, I guess I don't need that one anymore. So I'll pop into here and take out the material panel, which is that one. Now in order to fix this, I'm going to have to remove the grouping, which I don't seem to be able to do. <laughs> so that's fun. Um, let's see if I was to take these two, what can I group these? Group, 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 group. Ungroup, there we go. Ungroup, perfect. Now I can take this one and group it. You know, I probably could have done that a bit quicker. And I've got to put the name back in there. And I've got to come in here and change this one's name. Here we go. So that uh, took a bit longer than I thought, but the, the example is there. It takes a little while to, to do this. So let's take a look at uh, how that other tool can kind of speed this up. So I'm going to undo a few things there. Oh, too far. I think that is good. Let's take a look at the CTC tool. So back into my premium tools here, I've got my schedule parameter resolver. So inside the schedule parameter resolver, I'm going to select my schedules here. I've got my shared parameter file selected at the top, and then I'm going to work through my materials. So my frame material, or that's going to be my door frame material shared parameter. My material, which is the panel material, that should be my door panel material. And then I've got my door panel thickness my door height and my door width. Should be able to just click OK there. And in the background, my schedule is going to update. There we go. Confirms it's completed successfully. Can close that down. I've now got appropriate heights, widths, thicknesses and material information. 
It hasn't broken my grouping. The only thing I have left to do here, it's decided not to rename the headers here. Seems strange as it did them on the others, but maybe I uh, maybe I undid too much earlier. Anyway, schedule has been resolved. Okay, well, thank you very much for viewing our webinar today. Please take advantage of uh, communicating with us. You can get in contact with us via any of these socials. Also, of course, we have our solid assist. So if you have issues with using uh, any of your Autodesk tools, please get in touch with us at Solid Assist. If you're one of our customers, it's included as a free tool. We're going to give you technical support and make sure that you're uh, up and running again if you have any troubleshooting. Okay, so I thank you again for your time today. My name is Drew Jarvis. I'm a technical consultant at SolidCAD and I look forward to connecting with you again in the future.